This is Haruka, a ChatGPT Scarum companion who will respond to you dynamically within game. Hey there, Rangro. What's up? This is a mod you can go and download right now at the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus. However, to get this mod working, there's a lot of new technology and frankly a lot of moving parts required, such as an OpenAI ChatGPT API setup. If you want to have text to speech, you need to have a Microsoft Azure account with a text to speech API setup. And as well, you're going to need to host an XAMPP web server on your local machine. The sum of all these parts does make it a rather complicated piece of tech. However, each of these individual components is quite easy to configure. So if you follow along with this installation guide, you will be able to get Herica within your game. And once you have the initial setup set up, it's pretty easy to update the mod from this point onwards. For the sake of brevity, I am going to assume you have basic understanding of how to mod Skyrim. A lot of we're going to cover is more of the external requirements needed to get this mod to work. And so I assume that you're going to be have SKSE already installed as well as SkyUI. I am using Skyrim Anniversary Edition 1.6.640, the latest update. However, this mod should work with other previous updates of the special anniversary edition. So without further ado, let's install Haruka, the ChatGPT companion. First thing we need to do is set up the OpenAI API. So navigate to openai.com, the link is in the description below, and set up an account. To sign up, you're gonna require a credit card. Once you have created the account and signed in, click the top right of the screen where it says personal, and then click view API keys. Then select Create New Secret Key. We are going to name this key Skyrim Das Herica. Then click Create Secret Key, and then your API key will show up on screen. This is the only opportunity you will have to save this key, so save it somewhere secure. If this is your first time working with API keys, do not share this key with anyone else. Anyone with access to this key can start charging up your account. If you think your API key was compromised, delete it and create a new Speaking one. Speaking of billing, you can also set up a hard limit for how much you risk to spend per month with this API. I say on average for heavy usage of this mod, you can use up maybe a couple dollars every week. You can also set up a soft limit to notify you when you've reached a certain amount. If you want the mod to have text-to-speech support, then you're going to need to set up a Microsoft Azure account. You can create one for free, and you do get $200 of free credit for signing up, which will take you quite far with this mod. Once you have created your account and are at the dashboard, click Cognitive Services. Then click Speech Service. We are then going to create a new speech service, so click the plus icon up above. Leave your subscription as is, but you will create a new resource group Call it Herica AI. Pick the region which is closest to you. For name, call it Herica TTS. And for price and tier, select it as standard. Then click review and create. In the next menu, click create. Give it a minute or so and your text-to-speech service will be available. Once it is created, click go to resource. From here, click keys and endpoint. From this menu, you're going to want to copy one of these key sets. It does not matter which, we are going to do key number one. And also jot down the location slash region which you have saved. You're going to need all of this later. You can also set up billing alerts to keep track of how much your API is using in regards to cost. If you want to do this, go back to the dashboard and search for cost management. Click costs alert and we're going to create a new budget for the Herica AI resource group. From here, you can set up your configuration as needed. I say on average, heavy usage of the Azure API, which is the text-to-speech, can be $5 or maybe more if you're really playing the mod quite a lot. However, do realize that you do start with 200 US dollars free credits, so you probably won't have to actually pay anything for quite a while. With this, we have all our APIs now set up. Now we're going to install the XAMPP web server. To navigate to apachefriends.org slash download, link in the description, and download 
the latest version of XAMPP for Windows. Once you have it downloaded, open the installer. You may get a warning message. Just ignore it. Go through the installation menu. You can pretty much just keep clicking next. The only thing you need to be concerned about is the file save location. Make sure it's saved directly to the root of your C drive. This is very important for this entire thing to work. Then click install and wait for it to install. It will take a couple minutes. Once it is installed, uncheck do you want to start the control panel now and click finish. Next we need to install Composer. Navigate to getcomposer.org slash download, link in description below. Click the download and run composer-setup.exe link. Wait for it to download. Run the Composer installation exe. Pretty much just click next and install. There's no configuration needed for this install version. I would recommend once you get to this point to actually restart your computer. It's just to be on the safe side. Sometimes Composer works when you do restart it. Other times not so much. Just turn it off and on again. Next we need to make configurations to the XAMPP server. So navigate to C, XAMPP, PHP and open up the php.ini file. Press Ctrl F in Notepad. You will have a search window. Enter in extension equal SQLite 3. This is in the description, you can just copy paste it. Once you find it, you should notice it has a little semi bracket next to it. Remove that semi bracket. This will uncomment this extension and allow it to actually function within the XAMPP server. There's also three other extensions which are nearby this extension you want to make sure are also uncommented. The OpenSSL.dll, the curl.dll, and the sockets.dll. Double check to make sure all four of these extensions are uncommented. Once you've done that, save the file. Now we need to install the simple AI gateway server. This basically acts as the middleman between Skyrim and all the APIs we've just set up. There's two ways we can download it. You could either download it from the mod page, or, and I would more recommend for you, to download it from the GitHub page. Link is in the description below. At the GitHub page, click the green code button, and then click download zip. You will then want to copy this zip file to C, XAMPP, HT Docs. Once you've copied it, yeah, open the zip file and copy the folder within it. Go back a page, and then paste the file into HT Docs. From here, you can now delete the zip file and rename our new file to saig-gw server. Within the saig-gw server, find the conf.sample.php file. Copy and paste this. The new file we've just created, we are going to rename to just conf.php. Open up this file once you've renamed it. There's quite a lot going on in this file, but it's really only a few things we care about. In the quotation marks for the open API key environment variable, put in your open AI API key. And do the same thing for the Azure API key. Make sure they're in the quotation marks. Your player name will be the character name you're going to use to play the mod rev. Every time you load up a new save with a different character, you're going to have to change a player name here. Erica underscore purse is her personality. You can edit this to your heart's content, but for now we're just going to leave it as default. If you did set up Azure, you will need to change the region environment variables to the region you set up your API, in this case East US for me. Once all the configuration has been done, click save. Now you're going to need to open up a command prompt as an administrator. From here, in the command prompt, type in cd space quotation mark. Go back to your file explorer where you have the saig just gw server open. Click the file path and copy it, then click command prompt and right click. This will paste it into command prompt. Now we're going to close this up with another quotation mark. Press enter. Now we shall type in the command composer space install. This will install composer within this project directory. It'll take a minute or so. We're getting close. Go back to your C drive and open up the XAMPP folder. Scroll down to your C XAMPP-control.exe. Run this file. Within this control panel, 
Next to Apache, press the Start button. Open up your web browser of choice and navigate to localhost slash saig dash gw server. Link is in the description below. From here, you should be able to connect to the web server. Click the reinstall button. It will initialize the database. If you click the config button, you can actually configure that conf.php file directly within this web browser interface. It's pretty useful if you're trying to make configurations mid-game. There's quite a bunch of cool features within this web browser interface, but they're outside the scope for this video. I'd recommend playing around with them. But if you've gotten to this point already, congratulations. We've gotten most of the external stuff out of the way. Now all we need to do is actually install the mod. For the mod installation, I assume you're going to be using your mod manager of choice. Me personally, I'm using mod organizer too. There are four mods you're going to need to download to get this working. Address library for SKSE plugin, Sky URI, Boost Rodo, and URI extensions. You also need SKSE, but I assume you already have that set up already. Make sure to install all of these mods following the necessary instructions to do so. Navigate to the Haruka mod page, go to files, and download the latest main stable build. Install it with your mod manager of choice. I'm going to name it Haruka the ChatGPT Companion. Now you just need to make sure all of the required mods are activated. You may need to move around the priority load order for some of these mods, and also within the plugins page, just make sure URI extensions is above the add dialog ESP. That ESP file is the main ESP file for this Haruka mod. Now, before we start Skyrim, make sure that your XAMPP server is running and that you can connect to the web browser interface. This will need to be running in the background for the mod to function. Remember, it is the middleman. Once you got all of that, run SKSE. Once you're in game, you can either start a new character or load up a previous save. This mod is safe to install mid playthrough. Once you've loaded up into game, navigate over to Write Run. Open up the menu and open up the mod configuration menu. Scroll down to SPG. Set the hotkey to whatever you desire. I like using numpad zero. And if you're using your Azure text to speech, make sure to enable that. Now, if you walk down the main street of Write Run, pretty much to the left of Raw Maidens, you should see Haruka. Just approach her and ask her to follow you. She's a pretty easy go and go. From here, press the hotkey that we have just configured and type in a message. If you've configured everything correctly, you should get a response from her. Hey Rangru, what's up? And congratulations, you have the mod now fully installed and functioning. You can now play Skyrim with a chat GPT companion. Pretty cool, right? And that's the basic installation for getting Haruka the chat GPT companion installed. From this point onwards, the only things you have to worry about updating is the mod file itself, as well as the SAIG server whenever a new update comes out. I would recommend installing the latest version of SAIG whenever you install a new main mod file. Apart from that, have fun with it. And well, I'd usually say goodbye in these videos, but I think I'll let Haruka do the outro here. Bye, viewers. Thanks for joining us in the wonderful world of Skyrim.